Everyone loves a good landmark. The Roman Colosseum, the ancient city of Machu Picchu, the Giza pyramids. But have you ever wondered how it once looked? Way back in the days when they were built? Or even in the time they were covered in ivy and forgotten by humanity? Buckle up, cause we're heading on a time travel adventure to the world's greatest archeological sites. Our voyage begins in South America, deep inside the Peruvian mountains. Behold, the city of Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is a monument to the ingenuity and power of the Inca civilization. During its prime, the Inca civilization stretched 2,500 miles along South America's coastline from modern-day Ecuador all the way down to Chile. And Machu Picchu was located at the heart and center of it. The historic site was constructed at around 7,000 feet above sea level, more or less around 1450 BCE. The gated city consisted of around 150 buildings made of stone. The Incas managed to build temples, houses, and even a complex aqueduct system to irrigate the entire town. And yes, they did all that without the help of wheels or any instrument made of iron. The housing model is somewhat similar to stone houses we see nowadays, with the difference that the Incas didn't use any cement to stick together the blocks of stone. Yet, they fit seamlessly on top of each other. Not only that, the Incas must have developed a rudimentary yet effective anti-earthquake technology, since in the event of a quake, the rocks would shake without falling out of place. If Machu Picchu had been built today, it would have cost over $70 million to finish the entire thing. The purpose of the site is still a mystery to many historians. Theories suggest that it could have been built as a ceremonial site a safety base for the Inca people, or even a retreat for royalty. What we know for a fact is that in the 16th century, 100 years after Machu Picchu was built, its population abandoned it, with tree roots taking over the majority of the site and keeping it hidden from humankind for over four centuries. It wasn't until the 20th century that the world was reintroduced to Machu Picchu when a Peruvian farmer led Yale University professor Hiram Bingham III to visit the site. Since then, Bingham and many other explorers dedicated their lives and research to studying the archaeological wonder of Machu Picchu. Now, for the next stop on our time-traveling vehicle, the city of Pompeii in Italy. Pompeii has crowded our collective imagination for many years. The eruption of the Mount Vesuvius volcano in 79 AD and the destruction of an entire city is hopefully not something that will happen again. But I bet you're wondering, what did Pompeii look like on its last day? It took 18 hours for Pompeii's streets, markets, houses, and forums to be buried under millions of tons of volcanic ash. Thanks to some clever scientists, we discovered that the lava and ashes that covered Pompeii on its very last day actually helped to freeze the city in time. Different from ice, the cloud of ashes did not preserve the city intact, but as the items disintegrated over 2,000 years, they left voids under the earth. Archaeologists found that if they filled these voids with plaster, the shape of the buried city would soon reveal itself. And that's exactly what happened. Of course, it was nothing like the bustling city of 12,000 people that had existed for many years before the fateful eruption. Pompeii was a vibrant and rich municipality. The site's ruins revealed that many areas of Pompeii boasted impressive houses, some with balconies, which was a sign of great wealth at the time. And believe it or not, even some artwork survived the eruption. Archaeologists found well-preserved frescoes and murals of mythological creatures, all indicating that members of the high society lived there. Ruins show the city even had thermal baths and showers made with luxurious materials. Oh, and apparently, the people of Pompeii had amazing teeth. Yes, archaeologists could see even that tiny level of detail from the plaster molds they recovered from underground. Still in the Italian territory, we find one of the world's biggest tourist attractions, the Roman Colosseum. It was built as an amphitheater during the reign of Emperor Vespasian, around 70 AD. It wasn't until 80 AD that Vespasian's son, Emperor Titus, inaugurated the Colosseum. The monument was something to behold, with 157-foot-tall walls, over 80 entrances, and the capacity to host 87,000 people. All social classes and groups were welcome at the Colosseum, 
and this partly explains why it flourished for so many centuries. During the decline of the Roman Empire, around the 6th century AD, the Colosseum started being neglected and abandoned. The monument was looted, and some of its columns and stones were used to build infrastructure elsewhere. Only one-third of the original Colosseum still remains, and if it's big now, imagine what it once was. Greece was home to one of the world's largest empires. At the height of this empire, literally and historically speaking, more or less 2400 years ago, the Greeks built a citadel known as the Acropolis. The Acropolis, which is composed of historical buildings, is considered to be one of the biggest landmarks of Western civilization to date. Tourists that visit the capital city of Athens today may be faced with yellowish and broken pillars of the Parthenon, standing way up high in one of the city's hills. But way back when it was built, between 447 and 432 BCE, the imposing and majestic Parthenon was purely white as the entire monument was built with gleaming white marble. The statues inside were made of gold. The Parthenon is a 23,000 square foot temple held up by 69 marble columns. The largest blocks of marble are massive, weighing around 10 tons each. And the most surprising fact is that the marble didn't come from Athens, but from a nearby site that stood 10 miles from the Acropolis known as Mount Pentelikon. Historians intrigued by where the primary material for building the Acropolis came from found tiny and big blocks of marble all scattered around the floor of Mount Pentelikon. There was also a paved road that the Greeks had built to carry the rocks around. But perhaps the most impacting monument of all times is located at the heart of the Middle East, outside the Egyptian city of Cairo. The pyramids are considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Giza Pyramid Complex was built as a tomb for the pharaoh Khufu around 4,500 years ago. Between 20 to 30,000 people took part in the construction process. It's composed of three pyramids. The massive monument is made out of approximately 8,000 tons of granite and over 550,000 tons of mortar, which gives it the appearance it has today. Would you believe me if I told you that the pyramids didn't always look like this? Far from it. They were shiny white with a golden triangular tip at the top. This is because the Egyptians used over 6 million tons of limestone to cover the entire rocky, step-like structure. All so that they could gleam white under the unforgiving sunlight of Egyptian skies. The Pyramid of Khufu remained the tallest structure on Earth made by humans for over 3,800 years. It was the only eight-sided pyramid in Egypt and was believed to align with Orion's belt. It's considered to be the most aligned construction facing north. In 1979, it was inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Let's head on down to the Indian city of Agra to quickly visit the Taj Mahal. You may know it as the Taj, but it can also be called by its more endearing name, a teardrop in the cheek of time. The Taj took over 22 years to build and was commissioned in 1632 by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan as a declaration of love for his third and favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. It was made with ivory white marble and amazingly, due to tight conservation, it still remains very similar to what it was when it was built. I think all this talk of landmarks got me thirsty for some traveling. What about you? Tell us in the comments below if you've ever visited some of these sites or which interesting landmarks you'd add to this video.